can go ahead and type in that chat box that you can hear me. That is extremely helpful. Then I know a couple things. I know one, that my technology is working. And the second thing I know is that you know where you can, during this webinar, ask questions as we're going through things. So if you have any questions that come up as we're going through how to edit your website, please, please feel free to type them in the chat box. We've got people from all over, so I'm not gonna unmute everyone in the effort to really keep the background noise to a dull roar. Awesome, Jeremy. Um, the second thing I wanna make sure is that you can see my screen. So you should see a screen on it uh, with a scrolling banner and uh, it looks like a website. You can see a search bar and all of that. So everybody can hear. Can you all see my screen as well? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So my name is Kelsey. I'm gonna be taking you through how to edit your websites today. Um, the goal is that by the end of this session, you know where to go to get to your website, as well as how to log in and what and how you can customize things. We are going to go through this fairly quickly today with the goal that we're spending about 30 to 45 minutes showing you how things are done and you feel comfortable enough by the end that you know where to begin. We're also going to go through how you edit your profile and how to set up your lead notifications. This, set, this session is being recorded, so we are recording this session. And as soon as this session is done, you are going to get an email from the company that has links to the recording as well as to individual portions of what we talk about today so that you know more information. There will also in that email be included all the links for the coming training in the next few weeks so that you know where to go and when you're going there so that you can participate in more training. So without further ado, we're going to begin. And we are going to start by going to your website. And so to access your website, you're going to go to your first initial last name dot snphomes.com. So it's going to be your first initial last name dot your company website dot com. And to give you an example of what that looks like, I am going to put Dan Berg's website in the chat box, just so you have a, a visual of what that website address looks like. Uh, the first question that people normally have when I start this and we talk about their web address is, what if I have my own web address that I want to attach to my website? Can I do that? Are you going to cover that today in class? The answer is yes, you can absolutely do that. And that's going to be something that goes up out in the follow up materials to you so that you can do that. And if the people that don't want to do that, we're not um, taking up time during the webinar to show them something they're not. Going to. So once you're on your individual website, you're going to scroll to the very bottom of the screen. And when you get to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see two sections. One's gonna say IQ Office Login right here. And one is going to say IQ Web Login. When you click your IQ Web Login, it's going to pop up with a screen that says, what's your user ID and what's your password? And if you don't know your user ID or password, Jeremy is going to be able to get those to you and he'll be able to help you out with what those are. Sorry to put you on the spot there, Jeremy. Uh, your username is likely your first initial last name and your password is whatever he's told you your password is.
And once you log in, you know that you've entered into your editing mode because you get this black bar at the top of your screen. So you can really tell that you're in edit mode because of that black bar. As you look at your website, um, you're going to notice you're not exiting out of your website to edit. You're gonna do all of your editing from within your website. Don't worry, this does not take your website down for your customers. They're still able to access and search the MLS even if you're editing on a different page. Uh, this is just so that you can live see the changes that you're making on your website. So once you are logged into your website, you're going to start by going to this design tab at the top of the screen. So when I click on this design tab, it's going to open up a window. Um, Steve mentioned that the, the web present, present, presentation is very grainy right now. Anyone else? This is as high resolution as I can get it. I believe it's something on Zoho size, Steve. So, so bear with me. I wish I could make it better. Um, I can scroll in a little bit more, um, but I don't know that how that will affect the resolution depending on what internet speed you have at your location. Okay, perfect. So as you're looking at this, I'm going to scroll out really quick so you can see what it looks like in real time. And you'll notice at the bottom here that I'm circling, um, it is, there's a list of designs. And then at the top, you'll see a layout and you'll see a bulleted list. So um, as I scroll through those choices, as I select on a different design, it's going to show a different layout with a different design. Uh, Jeremy, I have changed all my settings multiple times. It's actually a, an issue with the software that's beyond my control. Uh, so as I scroll through, I can select the design. I can see that bulleted list of what's going on. I can say, okay, I want to look at these designs. I like design 13 or I like design 12. Uh, and each of these have just a few different things. Once I find the design that I love, I am going to just click this green button here that says use this design. So this is a green button and I'm going to click on it and it's going to automatically apply the design that I've chosen. So I can see here, I don't have that photo that was here before. I've got the tiles and now I can enter in and begin to edit the text. If I apply a design and I don't like it, not a big deal. I would just go back up to my design tab. I would scroll through my choices again and I would choose the design that I liked and it would then automatically reapply that design. Once I've chosen that design to make changes to the page itself, I'm going to click on this edit page in the upper right hand corner. So this white button in the upper right hand corner says edit page. I'm going to click on it and then I, it is going to show these edit pencils. So over each section that I can change, it is going to show that edit pencil. And we're going to start with the header. So um, at the top of the page, I'm going to click on this edit here and I can then edit my header. At the top, I can see um, here it says for the home tape page header, I would like to display. Do I want to use a slideshow, a video, or a YouTube video. If I choose a slideshow, I can edit each individual slide simply by clicking on the blue change button on the slide that I would like to edit. I can then upload images. So if I wanted to upload my own image, I could do that by clicking this upload images here. And then choosing a photo or choosing an image to upload. Uh, it will process and it will automatically show that image here and insert it. If I look at it and say, hey, that's not the image I like, 
no big deal. I can go in, I can choose from stock images as well. So underneath the realistic images at the top tab, I can click there and I can view some images. There's areas, there's landscape photos, there's ocean photos, there's lifestyle photos, uh, there's even holiday or seasonal photos. So I could go in and I could say, hey, I actually would like a winter photo and I'm going to choose uh, perhaps this mug for Christmas time. And you have to display one slide. So the first slide is mandatory that you display, but underneath each slide after that, it says, do you want to show this slide? Yes or no. If you choose to show it, then it will automatically include in the slideshow once you exit out. To exit out, you're going to click the OK button in the lower right hand corner, and it's automatically going to show those changes. Now, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a green save button and that green save button only appears when you need to save a change. It is there because if I want to scroll through and actually visually look at the changes I've made before they are made public, that gives you the opportunity to preview the changes you've made. If you decide not to change them, you would simply click the cancel button and it will restore it back to the state it was before before you made those changes. Again, you can go back in and edit that header at any time, clicking that white edit button in the upper right hand corner and then going into edit. The next thing you can do for a header is you can include a video. So underneath the video, there are videos available for you for stock videos. Again, to change that video, you're going to click on the blue change button here and it will pull up the lifestyle library that's available to you. As you see what those images are, and to choose one, you would just simply click on select and it will automatically insert that into that frame. The last option that you have is you can attach a YouTube video. So if you have a YouTube video of yourself or your area, or uh, perhaps it's a home that you have listed that you wanted to share as a header on your website, you can absolutely do that. You're going to copy and paste that YouTube URL. So if I'm at youtube.com and I find the URL that I would like to use, I can then go in and click share. I would copy that link and I would paste that link here. And then I choose if I would like the video to be muted on my page, yes or no. So you choose, if you choose yes, there will be no sound. If you choose no, then, um, then there will be sound on your page. On the right hand side of this form, it's going to talk about what you can change on that tab. So right now where it says find a home here, if you would like to change that text, you can do so on the right hand side of this page. So if you wanted to change this to say um, home, find a home, not a house. You can do that. You would choose what type of properties you want. You could also choose if you wanted to change the property type from residential to multifamily. Um, you also could say, hey, I want to set a minimal listing price of 140,000. You could do that. Um, and do you want to show additional search fields? Yes or no. Once you've made all your changes, you're going to click OK it will automatically apply those changes. And I'm gonna show you a clip. I believe that I went in and they're good, there they are. So find a house, home, not a house, and all of that information. 
Are there any questions so far about how you go in and either edit your design at the top of the page or how you can edit all the information in that header section of your website? Um, if you have questions, go ahead, type them in. Um, if you don't have questions, if you can just drop an N or a no into um, the chat box so I know that. Um, perfect. So there is a question. It says, can you post multiple YouTube videos? Um, you can post multiple YouTube videos to your page. However, in the header, Steve, you can only have one YouTube video and it will loop. But we'll talk about where you can make a page that um, you can either embed a playlist or uh, several videos on a page. Yes. So there's a two part. In the header, you can only have one video. But yes, you can have a section that highlighted um, multiple YouTube videos. Does that answer your question, Steve? Awesome. Is there a filter for searching homes? Is there a filter for searching areas in the home search? So uh, we haven't gotten into the home search yet. I'm going to come back to that question, Steve. If I don't come back to it, remind me of that. I want to make sure we get through all of the sections that you can edit on this page before I start to talk about searches and IDX feeds and that side of things. Okay. Any other questions? All right, if there's no other questions, we're gonna go ahead and go on. And I do wanna just call to your attention that in this layout, there are a few things that are hidden. So this is the single panel hit section is hidden, uh, the areas section is hidden, and the YouTube sec section is hidden. So if I wanted to display this, I would just click this blue dot here or this blue bar here that says click here to show the panel. I would choose yes. And then it's going to have another section that I can then edit. If I look at it and I think, oh, that's horrible. I don't want that there. I can actually click this hide button in the upper right hand corner and I can choose to hide it. Again, making sure that as you're doing changes, you're clicking this green save button in the upper right hand corner. There is nothing more frustrating than going through and editing your website and making all sorts of changes and then realizing you didn't click the save button and you have to go back and you do it, you have to do it again. Below that single panel section, there are some tabs, um, some panels that you can edit. Again, clicking on that gray edit button will open up the edit panel screen. This acts very similar to editing your header. I can choose how many panels I would like to display, one, two, three, four, or six. Then selecting each panel, I can choose the photo as well as on the right-hand side, the text the description, the button, and where I would like that link to go. So for example, uh, panel three is personal portal. Uh, the button text says create account, and I want it to go to my portal. If I don't like this image that's here, again, I would just click this change. I could upload my own image, or I could go and use a stock image. Please keep in mind if you are uploading your own images that you need to make sure that you have the rights to use those images. So you either purchase them from a photographer or from a stock photo place, or you've taken them yourself. As I scroll down further, um, Steve, here's a question about the YouTube section. So this, dis this design does have a YouTube section. You can click here to show that. And then I can edit that and I can actually link through to a YouTube channel if I wanted to that had all my videos on it. Again, if I decide I don't want this section, I'm going to click the hide button and choose to hide it. So that is a little bit about how to edit the main section of your website. Um, they are all 
currently templated out. Um, however, really to give it your own personal um, flair and your own personal style, to go in, choose a design, change some of the photography to match your personal style and your personal brand in conjunction with what your company has going on is really important. And I would say that between now and next Tuesday at two o'clock, if you can spend approximately an hour going in and working on your website, you will be in very, very good shape. Um, before we go on, um, we are gonna jump into how does the search functionality work? How do you capture leads on your site and that part of it? Are there any questions about changing any of the images or links on your homepage? I wanna make sure that there are no questions and please know if you have a question, someone else very likely has the same question that you do. Again, if you don't have any questions, just go ahead and drop an N or a no in that chat box then I know you're ready to go to the next section. So the next thing I want to talk about are is how do people search for properties on your site and what does that look like when they are on their mobile phone or they're on their tablet. Uh, I'm going to log out quickly just so we have less um, distraction at the top with that web editor. Um, I want to make sure that you can see it in its fullness. First of all, your website is fully mobile enabled. So if I shrink my screen down, I can actually See what it looks like on a mobile screen. So I can see here, um, it's completely mobily enabled. Everything looks great. I also want you to know that you can't break your website. So as you're going in and you're editing it, um, it's not going to break it as you're going through things. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make this larger again, and I'm going to scroll in a little bit. As people are searching on your site, you can they can search by area. So um, uh, Elizabeth, I don't understand your question. This is the entire Fernley office agents. I need you to give me a little bit more to go off there. Um, so we are pulling directly from your MLS. We are updating it every five minutes. Um, we are not going through a third party vendor. So we are indeed fully integrated with your MLS. So as your consumers are searching, whether they're typing in an address or if they're typing in an area or a neighborhood or a city, uh, it is pulling directly from your MLS. There also is a nearby feature. So if they're searching on a device that has location, they can search by the nearby item. And they also can go into a map search or an advanced search that gives them more office or more options. So if I click on advanced search, they're going to get a full list of the listings available and they can go in and further um, drill that down by property type, by list, uh, list price, by bedrooms, bathrooms. They can also add additional features here. So they can absolutely drill it down further. Steve, you had asked, is there a filter for searching homes, areas in the home search? The answer to that is yes. Um, and they can do that by typing the area. So if I actually went in and typed in Lovelock for the city or the area, it would narrow that down. Okay. As consumers are um, looking at a listing. If they are on your agent site, 
they are going to see your information on the right hand side of that listing. If they want more information, there's several ways that they can, you can have a lead captured on your page. The first way is if they fill out this contact form on the right hand side. At the very bottom of the listing, there is also a request a showing form where they can request a showing for that property. And then you'll notice above, right next to the details about the home, there's a share, email, text, and print button for that listing. And if they choose to text that listing, again, it's going to be a lead capture form. It's also going to ask that they validate their numbers so that you're not getting a, a robot that's coming in and, and sending you bogus leads. So we are capturing leads from those sites. Those leads do directly feed into your back office and you do get notified via text, email, and phone call. And we're gonna talk about it in a little bit, how you can change your preferences. There are a couple other types of lead capture on your site um, beyond just the listing contact. There's also a direct contact me in the menu. There's a what's my home worth function page where people can enter in their property address in order to get a report on what their home is worth. And they also can access a lead through my portal. So clients can go to your website, sign up for an account so that they can track open houses, save their changes, save their searches, and, and create a really interactive experience for themselves. So there are several different lead sources for you on your website and they, were, they are all automatically built in. Any questions about the searching functionality of your page or how clients can search their page, your page or what lead capture sources are available to you? Awesome, thanks Pamela. So I do want to talk about um, one other thing that's on this menu. So we talked about the home page, we talked about the for sale, which is listings. We talked about my portal and what my home is worth in contact. There's also a section that's called about me. And on this about me page, it is going to show all of your contact information. So it will have your profile picture as well as your contact information. And then below that, if you have listings, it will show your active listings. And then we are also integrated uh, with Zillow. So if you have Zillow reviews, it will review, it will show your Zillow reviews. And you also can have a, a bio inserted here. Now, this is the only page that you edit in a different way than you edit all of your other pages. And the real reason for that is this is also the page that populates on your company page. And so you have to edit that in a place that's universal. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna log, you can see that I'm in the edit bar and notice that I don't have any edit buttons on the screen. So to get to your profile, to edit your profile, you're going to go to the bottom and there's a section that says IQ office login where you can log into your IQ office. And that website is mysnphomes.com. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and put it in this link or in the chat box. Also know that it will be included in the email that goes out to you following this webinar so that you know where to log in to access your profile information. Once you're logged in to your back office, and I'm gonna scroll way in for this as well so that it is easier to see. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see your name and your picture, 
And when you click on that, you're going to see a section that says profile. So when you click on your profile, it is going to pull up a section that looks like your information. So you can scroll down a little bit. You'll see a section on the right hand side that says links. This is where you can put the link to your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your YouTube channel. And as you put those links in, you will know they're connected because on your profile page, on your front facing profile, these boxes that show social media will automatically darken. Uh, do you all know how to find your Facebook or your Twitter or your LinkedIn page? Do you want me to show you that quickly? I want to make sure you know how to find that. Uh, yes, you know how to find it, or yes, you want to be shown how to find it, or no, we don't know how to find it. <laughs> that, perfect. That is a perfect example about how things get lost in translation via text. Um, so, <laughs> we're going to go, we're just going to, I'm going to use Facebook as an example. So, when you go to your Facebook page, I'm going to pull up my personal Facebook page. I don't know what my friends are saying in my feed, so I apologize in advance. When you go to Facebook, you're going to see a page, something that looks similar to this. Um, if you have a business page, you will see it either underneath your shortcuts or you'll see it on the right hand side underneath your pages. To access and link your business page, you're just going to click on your business page and then you're going to copy and paste what's in that web bar so if you hit control C on a PC or command C on a Mac, and then you're going to hit control V or command V on your keyboard into Facebook and click save, it will automatically save that link here. Same with Twitter. So you'd go to your Twitter, you'd click on your name and it will pull up your page. If you don't have a Facebook page, business page and you want to link your personal page, that is possible. You're going to click your name in the upper left hand corner. And then you will click again on the web search bar, hit control C or command C. And then you can put control V or command V in that box. Once you go to your profile page, if you've done it correctly, the Facebook icon will darken or the LinkedIn icon will darken. And when you click on it, it will open up your Facebook page. I'm going to continue to scroll down because the next section I want to talk about is the images. So this is where you can upload your headshot. If you up, update it, you can click on the upload button just below images. You can either drag and drop a file or click the green add files. Then you're going to search and find the photo that you would like to add. And it's automatically going to insert that photo for you. If you decide you don't want that photo anymore, you can click on the delete. It will take your photo out of the system. But that is how this photo is populated. If I scroll down to the very bottom of this page, I'm going to see a section that says profiles. And this profile section is where you can enter your profile text or your bio information so that it is displayed to the public between your contact information and your active listings. So if I go in and I would type 
uh, been an agent since 2012, excited to be selling real estate in the Reno, Nevada area. I enjoy long horse ride, horseback rides by sunset and Cabernet from Northern California. That's what you can put in your profile text. A good rule of thumb is read your profile text out loud to yourself before you save it so that you can find any typos that you have. Again, making sure that as you're making changes, you're clicking the save button in the upper right hand corner so that you can indeed save what you're working on and not lose any changes. You also can attach a video. So if you have a YouTube video that you want on your um, profile, you can go in again, you would just say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to copy. I'm going to share this video. I'm going to copy and paste it into my vet video profile page. Once I do that, then it will automatically display on my profile. The last thing on this page you need to know about is there is a section to do your email signature. You can either type in this box a custom email signature or you can click on the email signatures button and choose from a templated version. So if you say, hey, I like this dark gray version it's going to insert your agent photo. It will insert your name, your cell phone number, and your email address, as well as your company logo and your license number if it's available. You click save and it will automatically have that email signature for you here. This becomes important. In a few weeks, we're gonna be going through <coughs> the marketing section. And this is where that email signature is pulling from. The next thing I want to talk about since we're in your profile is there is also a tab that's called preferences at the top. And this is where you can set your lead notification preferences. You'll notice that there are new leads by email, new leads by text, new leads by phone, and you can select from the drop down how you want to receive those leads. Do I want to receive them always, never, or use my office hours? So if I, um, only want to get emails during my office hours. I always want to get a text and I never want to get a phone call. I can easily select those from the drop down. Again, making sure I click save in the upper right hand corner if I've made changes. And if I would like to change my office hours, I can scroll to the very bottom of the page. And there's a section that's titled office hours where I can say, hey, Monday, I am available from 7 till 7.30. All you're doing when you change these office hours is changing the hours for your notifications by email or by text or by phone if you've selected use my office hours below. Again, to get here, we went to mysnphomes.com. We clicked on your name in the upper right hand corner we went to profile and then we worked on the details page, choosing our social media links, editing our profile text, inserting an email signature. Then we went to the preferences tab at the top and we chose how we were going to receive leads via text, email or phone and setting those preferences up. Any questions so far? Perfect. Where can we enter our license numbers on the website? Steve, underneath your details page, as you scroll down, um, underneath the office info, you're going to see a, a place that says license number. Once you enter your license number here and click save, it will display on your website. Anything that you want displayed on your website, you are likely going to change under this details tab. You're welcome. All righty. So now that we've edited your profile and the, your lead notifications, I do want to touch on a couple other things. Um, one, if you want to add custom pages to your site, you can do that. You do that by going to pages at the top of your screen and that will open up a window that says you have no pages yet. 
Uh, you can add as much content as you'd like to for your page. So right now your website is a fully functioning MLS search tool for your clients. They can go in, they can search for properties and they can find their results and you can capture leads. But if you wanted to build it out with more content, you wanted to include a page on let preferred lenders that you want to work with or preferred home inspectors that you want to work with, or you wanted to drill down and create a page about a very specific area that you enjoy working in. Um, you can do that again to get there and create your own content. You're going to go to the pages in the upper left-hand corner when you're logged into the editor and you're going to click new page. There are standard page templates. And at the bottom, there are dynamic page templates. The difference in the two templates is this. A standard page template means I choose the template, I put the information in, the information does not change until I manually go in and change the information. A dynamic page template means I go in, I change some of the images and some of the text, but the main content on the page is pulling from somewhere else. So for example, this listings template and these area templates are pulling from the MLS. Does the difference in a dynamic page template and a standard page template make sense? It will make more sense as I show you how it works. What I'd like to do is I'm going to do a dynamic page template so that you can see what it looks like because editing the text on a standard page template is the same as editing or on a dynamic page is the same as editing it on a standard page. So I'm going to do a listings template and then I'm going to click the blue next. Then I'm going to give my page a title. So I'm going to name this page uh, maybe uh, Loveland New Listings. I also can then add a description. So the description of the page should be something that is keyword rich and describes what is on your page. The description is the little blurb underneath what Google finds. So if I put this into a Google search, the description is this little blurb underneath what that page is about. If you would like, you can make it so people have to register to see the page. You also can add meta tags. Does anybody know what a meta tag is? The answer is no, that's totally fine. I can tell you what it is. I just wanna make sure I'm getting you the information. Awesome. Thanks, Elizabeth Grace. So a meta tag is this. In Google's brain, it is when it goes out and someone puts in a search. So someone puts in uh, Loveland, Colorado um, listings for sale or Reno, Nevada listings for sale. A meta tag is the bulleted list of information on the back end of your website that only Google is reading that tells Google. Have you ever only hit like five keys on your keyboard and then you have a bunch of code pop out on the right hand side of your page? That's where the metadata data is stored. It's not something that's public facing and it's how Google and Yahoo and Bing are categorizing your page in a bulleted point list. The description is what is public facing and people can read when they put that information into a search bar. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. 
if you do not want to add this at this time, you don't have to. You can say, hey, I don't want to add this at this time. If you say yes, you could add a medite like real estate for sale. And the value would be uh, real estate for sale, Reno, Nevada. And then I can add additional bullet points to the back end of this. I'm going to click OK. And we are going to page automatically. So I can see now that this page has generated. I've got my title for the page. I can see that there's a photo that needs to go here. There's some really nice Latin. Yeah, so Jeremy asked, what's the difference in the name and the value? The name is uh, just like the sh quick short glance at what it is. The value is actually the information that's going to be found. So it might be the, the name would be real estate, but the value is real estate for sale in Reno, Nevada. So the value narrows down the focus of the name. Does that answer your question, Jeremy? The value is more detailed and it's giving Google a scope. It is Steve. If your brain is like scrambled eggs, do not fret. This is being recorded. There's a copy of the recording. You're going to get quick links to each individual part of what we've done today. And you have a whole week to work on this. How many of you feel like you're drinking from Niagara Falls? <laughs> awesome. The good news is you're going to leave today and you're going to have a ton of information. You can't break the system. There's no such thing as doing it wrong. You can go back in, take it at your own time. Uh, I normally save this part of my little spiel for the end, but I'm going to also tell you this. Set a timer. It's really easy to get bogged down by, hey, I want to go in and I want to edit my page and I want to spend all this time. Set a timer for 20 minutes to 30 minutes the first time you go in. When your timer goes off, get up and walk away for a little bit. Also, when you get frustrated, if you get frustrated, while you're doing something. You're trying to do something, it's not working, you're not doing it right. Technology is frustrating. The only people who are not frustrated with technology are the people who are not using it. So we're all frustrated with technology at some point. Also, it's much easier to, yeah, Jeremy brings up a, a good point, hit save, then walk away. Also, it's way easier to help people before they're angry. So, we all learn technology at different rates. We all learn at different rates. So please know that it's better to ask for help early and often than late and angry. So if you're frustrated, if you have a question, reach out to Jeremy and your team there. They are there to help you. Um, we want you to feel good about the software. Click save, walk away, come back to it. Write your question down. We can review any questions that you have next week at that webinar as well. We want to make sure you feel successful. All right. Should we jump back into editing this page? Are you all ready for that? Nice little breather in the midst of the webinar. Uh, Elizabeth, you are going to speak with Jeremy about getting your passwords. Jeremy, I'm just going to put it in your plate that you are going to reach out to everyone in the office and get them their passwords. Um, today, at some point, they will hear from you. Be good with that.
And I can connect with you after this too, Jeremy, if you don't know where to find them or how to do that, I can help you. So Jeremy says emails were sent. So check your emails. Again, to edit this page, I just created this page. I'm gonna click this edit page button again in the upper right hand corner. Above everything that I can edit, a pencil shows. You guys are really funny. Uh, if I wanna put a header image in here, I click again, same idea. I go in, I can say, hey, I wanna choose a, a, a photo. I wanna go in and I'm going to do Maybe I really like this photo. Anytime that green save button shows up, I'm going to click save complete. I can go in and I can type text. So if I have some text about these listings that I'm gonna enter in, I can go in, I can type my text here. This works very similar to Microsoft Word. I can go in, I can change the format. I can change the font size. I can change the font color. I can insert a photo. I can resize that photo or delete that photo if it's huge. Once I'm done typing my text, I click OK, clicking save as I go along. If I want to add a YouTube link, a blog link, or a Yelp review, um, for the links, I would just click. I would add the YouTube link and click OK. Same for the blog, I'd put the title and the RSS feed link here and it would automatically embed. This Yelp feature is actually quite cool. I personally think I can say, hey, I would like to show the Yelp features. I wanna include uh, beauty and spas, active life, restaurants and um, home services. And it's going to pull up and it's actually gonna show a separate tab with each one of those things. And then I can also edit the listings. So if you do a standard page, we were just talking about a standard page before we got down the MetaTake black hole. On the standard pages, you're editing the images, you're editing the text, you're clicking save. It stays that way until you go back in and you edit it. A dynamic page, I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the listings and say, hey, I would like to include properties between, mm, let's say, 275 and 500,000. I want them to be only houses. Uh, I only want resale and I only want active listings to show. I can add in different filters like location, beds, new days, reduced days, acreage, basement, golf course view, all of the things on this page you can Once I click OK, it's going to narrow down the list of results that I get. And so I can see now that there are some changes in that listing that came up. On the left-hand side of the page, I can choose to show optional listing stats. And these statistics pull from these listings that I set up. So from the outline of the listings I put here, it is pulling and telling me what the statistics are. There's 1,400 listings available. The average price per square, square foot is 138. And the median price is 349, which it probably should be. If I chose between 150 and 500, 349 makes sense for a median price. There's also a breakdown of what's between 100, 0 and 100, 1 to 2. So they can actually go in and say, I want to see things that are outside what this, these parameters are, view home. So everybody loves statistics. Nobody likes calculating statistics. You can choose to show some optional statistics. These will change as the MLS change. That's what makes this a dynamic page. As the MLS updates, so do the listings. As the MLS updates, so do the statistics. Anything that is editable 
you can see the gray pencil over and you can click to edit it. Cool? We've got about. Uh, so this custom page you created. So that's where we're going next, Steve. Perfect. Thank you for that segue. Steve says, so this page you created, it sits where on the website? Um, how do I get back to it? What happens? Right now, it is not connected to a menu. So I can add this to a menu item if I would like. If I don't want to add it to a menu item, I just want to save it as a bookmark page to use on social media. You would just click the little star up in your browser corner here and you could bookmark it. If you want to connect it to a menu, we're going to go in and we're going to edit our menu. Um, I'm going to come back to your last questions there, Steve. So I'm going to click on menus. I can see my site menu here and I'm going to click edit. Once I click edit, I can see everything that's underneath this menu. Home, for sale, about me, my portal, what's my home worth, contact me. If I edit my site menu, home, for sale, about me, my portal, what's my home worth, contact me. I'm editing each of those sections. I'm going to go into custom pages. I can see my page I created here. I can give it a title. And I can choose, do I want it to be a top menu item? That means it shows as an item here. Or do I want it to be a sub menu? I can say, hey, I want this to be a sub menu of my for sale. Save. And now, when I look at my menu, I have a drop down, and here's that page. So the page only links through once you add it to a menu or you can add it and you could link it through on one of these tiles. So I could actually go in and edit one of these tiles and say, hey, I want this finding a home to go to my custom page that I created. Until you link it somewhere, it doesn't exist anywhere but within that URL. Next question, uh, the crazy statistics that you created. Uh, here, these crazy statistics here that I created um, are showing, is this only for when you do a dynamic page? Yes, these statistics are part of this template layout. Um, Jeremy asks, can you create a new page being a PDF page? Jeremy, I need a little more information. Do you mean can you upload a PDF to a page and have that be housed on your page? Or do you mean can you link, create a hyperlink that a PDF downloads from your page? Yes, you can link a PDF link. That is a little bit more advanced. If you're ready for it, I can show you it. But I'm worried that it's a little bit, of, it's a lot of information for the first look. What I would rather do is this. Let me show you this. I'm going to show you how you can put a hyperlink in. And then next week when we do the CRM, I will show you how to save a PDF and create a PDF link. Does that work? Then you're not all so overwhelmed that you're, yeah. So if I want to insert a link here, like say I wanted to hyperlink this text, there's a link button right here and I can actually just paste the URL. I can say, hey, I want to open this in a new window. Okay, and it will hyperlink that text. Can we take our URL from our new website and share it on our Facebook as a hyperlink? Absolutely you can, yes. You can take this link for this new page. You can say, hey, control copy. You can say, hey, I've got a great new website. I'm going to paste it in my Facebook and I can share it there and I can delete this and say, look at this great new page.
share. Yeah, you can do it for any page on your site. I'm on the I'm on that dynamic page. So the on social, Jeremy. So Jeremy asked, can you customize the photo that is within the link? You mean when you share it on social media, Jeremy? I want to make sure I'm answering the right question. Uh, I believe you can. Yes, I believe you can. Unless Facebook has changed something recently, um, and then I would say I don't know, but that would be a Facebook thing, not an us thing. But yeah, you can go in and upload your own photo. Like, hey, I posted it and I want to add a different photo in and have that display. Yes. To the best of my knowledge, as we stand today with Facebook, yes, that is true. Cool. Cool, cool. I want to do a quick recap. One, the only people who are not frustrated with technology are the people who are not using it. Two, your goal is to log in between now and next Tuesday to work on your website. You're going to start by going to your home screen, going to the very bottom of the page and clicking on IQ Web Login. You're going to choose your design, and then you're going to customize the photos on your main page. After those are customized, you're going to go back down to the bottom of the page and click on IQ Office Login. You're going to go to your name in the upper right hand corner. You're going to put in your license number. You're going to edit your bio. You're going to edit your email and underneath the preferences, you're going to set up your lead preferences so that you are receiving leads the way that you would like. This afternoon, you're going to get an email from the office with a copy of this recording as well as quick links to shortened videos on how to do things. The other thing that will be in that email is the phone number and the text number that you will receive leads from. In order to make sure that you're reading the email that is coming out from the office, we are going to send it in an email. Also in that email are gonna be the links to the trainings that are coming up next week and the weeks following leading up to Christmas. But, you're going to spend a minimum of an hour between now and next Tuesday editing your website. Everybody get out your calendars. Let's put it on your calendar right now. What day you're going to work on this? At least one day, preferably more. If you can schedule three 30 minute sessions, great. If you can schedule one one hour session, Awesome. If you can schedule five one hour sessions, I will do 10 push ups for you on the next webinar. I'll film myself I'll, and I'll put the little YouTube link in the chat box so you can see me doing 10 push ups for whoever does five hours between now and next Monday or next Tuesday. Any questions before we wrap up? That's a ton of information. It is recorded. You're going to get a copy of the recording. You're also going to get quick links that break down each part. How do I log in? How do I change my design? How do I change a photo? How do I create a custom page? Steve, you have very high expectations for me. Thank you, Marilyn. And thank you, Steve. Thank you all for spending time with me today. I know you're very busy. 
I know we're headed into this holiday season, so I appreciate you taking the time. I look forward to speaking with you next week. And Jeremy, shoot me an email if you need anything at all between now and then. Um, we'll make sure we get all your questions answered.